Hello, my name is Dr. Stacy Graber and I will be your guide to introduce you to the YSU English Festival's Graphic Essay Contest. This is a relatively new competition among the festival contest offerings, which requires students to create a graphic essay based on a specific theme decided by the festival committee in relation to our guest author's work. Maybe you're wondering, what is a graphic essay? Well, it is my pleasure to initiate you to this concept in hope that you will submit to future graphic essay competitions. So, in terms of an agenda for this session, here is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to review the rules for the graphic essay competition. Next, I will explain how the art form works. Following that, I will show you excerpts from impressive submissions to this year's competition and fill you in on what the judges had to say about those compositions. Finally, I'm going to provide you with a challenge to enable you to create your own mini graphic essay. And any work submitted will receive comments and or will potentially appear in festival related public postings. Let's read the rules of the competition together. Entries should contain panels in comic book style, which may be further arranged into tiers, rows of panels like a page from a graphic novel, and may contain both dialogue and thought bubbles and captions. Original words and illustrations are required with the use of panels on up to 16 pages, no larger than eight and a half by 11 inches. From this description, you probably get the idea that the graphic essay is a composition comprised of words and pictures, which have a special relationship to each other in that they express a specific idea, like a traditional essay. Comic art communicates in a unique way, and in order to describe that form of communication, I will draw mainly from a great book on graphic art by Scott McCloud titled Understanding Comics. By the way, McLeod has many videos you can watch on YouTube if you want to learn more about sequential art, as McLeod calls it. Sequential art, in the words of McLeod, refers to images and words arranged in a deliberate sequence. Hey, what would a competition be without more rules? Just kidding. The next thing you need to know about the graphic art contest is that we establish a new theme every year to keep it fresh. So this year, our topic was historical fiction. In words reproduced from the festival flyer, historical fiction, according to the website readwritethink.org, is comprised of narratives that take place in the past and which demonstrate imaginative reconstruction of historical events and personages. This important genre has also started to become more visible in the graphic novel format. Therefore, for this year's graphic essay competition, think of an event set in a real time or place. Now tell that story using your own words and illustrations with the use of panels on up to 16 pages, no larger than eight and a half by 11 inches. And if you're wondering how we judge the entries, we evaluate the work based on the following criteria originality of ideas, effectiveness of writing and illustrations, and observance of the festival theme or topic. So, what makes a graphic essay graphic? What is this art form all about? In a nutshell, according to Frank Serafini in his book, Reading the Visual, An Introduction to Multimodal Literacy, graphic texts are comprised of the following features. Panels, which are the individual frames in a sequence, the gutter, which is the white space signifying the transition between panels, and this can represent the passage of time, change of place, or different speakers, speech bubbles and thought bubbles, which represent talking and thinking, captions, usually rectangles containing notes that help the reader understand the narrative, typographic cues, which could be special selections of font, style, or size of lettering to signify tone, and you might even see bend a dots, which are textured backgrounds for effect, like you saw in the title slide featuring the work of pop artist Roy Lichtenstein. So, just like the children's author Margaret Wise Brown repeated throughout the important book, 
The important thing about graphic art is it employs these features to tell a story that combines print and visual elements. Both Scott McCloud and Frank Serafini stress that the panel and gutter system functions to move the narrative sequence of panels forward in a graphic work. More specifically, here are a few of the types of transitions between panels or frames identified by McLeod and Serafini. From left to right, we have moment to moment, action to action, subject to subject, scene to scene, and changing aspects of the same scene. The reason why this is important is that you can get the sense of the logic of a storyboard from the arrangement of frames in a sequence. The organization of frames communicates like the individual frames comprising a movie. McLeod indicates that the reader participates in meaning making in reading a graphic work like the viewer of a movie. Now, Let's apply some of this understanding to discussing a couple entries to this year's graphic essay competition. Ms. Ne Nikki Erickson and I judge the contest, and one of our favorite things to do is to discuss how print and visual elements unify to convey a distinctive account or story. This graphic essay, for example, based on a family history, captures the experience of farmers living through the potato famine and their decision to leave Ireland for America. The story is narrated by the son who attempts to explain his parents' reasoning. And as you can see, the account is developed through a rich use of color. At the same time, the shapes are very clearly defined, and the panels are often offset or irregularly shaped, rather than being perfect squares or rectangles. This choice is unique, as it wordlessly conveys the sense of conflict and tension in the drama. At the same time, the figures in the graphic essay are drawn in an expressionistic style and transmit an archaic historical quality. The drawings are intentionally minimalist, giving cues as to how to think about the progression of panels, but ultimately requiring a fully participatory or interactive reader viewer. Moreover, the collection of panels is moody, as conveyed through the use of sepia, muting of color, and silhouette, and the graphic essay altogether operates something like a photo album meaning the collective symbols suggest how to make sense of the account through a progression of images that convey a mounting sense of scarcity and desperation. This graphic essay is an original object of art composed to depict a specific time, perspective, and setting. Again, in conversation with Judge Erickson, let's talk about another exceptional entry to this year's graphic essay contest. This entry, Alabama 1963, does much with light and shadow, and the use of darkness is intentional as it makes a strong emotional and political statement. At the same time, this graphic essay is especially admirable for its sophisticated demonstration of multimodality, which means communication through more than one mode, print, visual, aural or sound, and gesture or movement. The quality of being a multimodal text, invoking the senses in so many ways, is what enables the feeling that the reader-viewer is personally present at the center of the action depicted. Moreover, this serious piece is alive with intensity and critical tension. Most impressively, this graphic essay communicates through the language of cinema in providing a series of images rendered as shots, simulating what the camera work looks like in a movie through the use of close-ups observable in the insets or frames within frames, character responses and relationships conveyed through medium shots, and a broader sense of place and action conveyed through long shots. The judges felt that the cinematic lens utilized in this graphic essay achieved the desired effect of unsettling the reader-viewer and prompting the spectator to action. Know that the judges offered some very useful advice to students who would like to submit work to the graphic essay competition in the future. 
Create a conversation on the page through images and language, and remember to pay close attention to the prompt. Take your time and develop the composition. Carefully consider the craft of the work. Fully render all ideas and think about chronology, meaning sequence, setting, characterization, and all of the unique affordances of graphic storytelling. The call to adhere to the specifications of a prompt reflects a requirement of professional writing, such as when writers or illustrators are asked to produce work in keeping with a specific topic called for by the editors of a themed issue for publication. In this case, what was needed was to foreground the historical moment through words, images, and tone to create a period look and viewpoint. So, would you like to put all this knowledge to use in the form of a response to a challenge? Let's call this the Graphic Essay Mini Challenge 2021, which is to create a storyboard comprised of no more than four panels. Show that you understand the relationship between panels by attempting to storyboard a historical event in no more than four frames. You may use any tool you like, or you may draw original art. Use the gutter to show transition in time, place, character, and or scene. Try integrating captions and speech and thought bubbles. Set up the frames any way you wish. And if you would like comments or maybe the opportunity for your work to potentially appear in festival related public postings, please send the product to sgraber at ysu.edu. That's S G R A B E R at ysu.edu and to N R Erickson at ysu.edu. That's N R E R I C K S E N at ysu.edu. Plus, check out the comic generating tools we have posted in the contest description reprinted on this slide. For example, I created a three-panel historical piece utilizing the comic generating tool from the Make Believes comic website to tell a bit of the story of Typhoid Mary, recounted in Susan Bartoletti's book, Terrible Typhoid Mary, A True Story of the Deadliest Cook in America. The Make Believes comic website provides you with a wide range of characters and actions, speech and thought bubbles, representing varied tones of voice, from whispering to yelling, and opportunities to insert panels and objects, play with backdrops, plug in fun instances of onomatopoeia like wham, snap, oof, apply color, and alter positioning. I would rate this website A plus for being free, easy to use, meaning zero learning curve, and totally flexible. You can basically create anything you are able to imagine. We hope you will choose to create and submit your work. Enjoy the English Festival!